impersonating me illegally? I will do that. And I have that on camera noted that you have been impersonated by uh, someone who joins our meeting impersonating you. It has generally been a guy named uh, Adrian Riskin or something like that. Riskin. Correct. Uh, Diana, how many public do we have? It looks like a lot or all the same. I don't know. <laughs> Um, right now we have, we have our, we have our council member. We have, um, I, I do have a lot entering still one moment. Oh, okay. Let's see. We have somebody, we do have somebody, uh, on, from public bonkers, Pama Frickin. I, I can't make out his name from the public that is impersonating David Bass for the record. Uh, we have some uh, USC journalism students. Oh, that's good. I'm not sure who that person is. Their camera's off. Well, yeah, I hear that for, for defunding bids. Uh, then we also have n uh, never, never, a ha I'm sorry, never hack a hacker. We have another hacker that is with us today. So I believe that's three public at this point. Oh, okay. Well, right. do we have a quorum yet? Yes. Okay, so um, why don't we um, call this meeting to order? It's 3.32, welcome everybody. Um, is there any public comment for any items that aren't on the agenda? Okay, I don't hear any. Um, before we get to the council member, uh, can I have a motion to approve the minutes from our last meeting? I'll make the motion. Thank you, Miguel. Uh, second, anybody? Second. All right, who was that? China? Me, was that China, you? yeah. Oh, China, thank you. Uh, didn't show up on my screen. Is there any uh, discussion of the minutes? Okay, does anyone need time to review them? All right, uh, we'll call the question. All those in favor of, of approving the minutes, uh, just say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion passes. Okay, we will get right to our guest, uh, the new council member, Nithya Raman, CD4. Uh, welcome. Thank you so much. And Tabitha from my team is also here. If you wanted to say hi. I think Tabitha has already been in touch with you, right? Yeah, we, uh, a few of us met Tabitha. It was a pleasure. Welcome, Tabitha. Thank you. Um, and I think uh, what we have are some questions that Diana, our executive uh, director, was going to read. And um, we can just go through them. And if any of the Board members have other questions. Uh, just oh, chime um, in. I, oh, sorry. You want to make a speech? Oh, no, I just yes. wanted to say that, you know, in these uh, early meetings, what I've generally been doing is mostly just hearing from organizations about their key issues. And, you know, we've been in office for about two months. We have a lot of processes in place. We have a lot of great staff, including TAB and uh, many others who are working diligently to get our team functioning and going, but we don't have all the answers yet, but we're gathering a lot of the information. So, you know, I just wanted to make sure that I, um, I use this as an opportunity to introduce myself and introduce, I mean, you already met Tabitha, but um, to, to introduce the office to you and to make sure that uh, we were aware of, of, the ways in which you've collaborated with the council office in the past and to make sure that we can, uh, we can um, be a good partner going forward. Uh, yeah. So. Oh, we appreciate that. That's wonderful. I want to introduce, so I'll do that. I'll introduce myself. Hello, everybody. I'm Nithya. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, to invite me to this meeting. And um, I'm excited to be here and to learn more and to tell you a little bit um, about um 
uh, yeah, about myself, if you don't already know, but, um, but really, really very excited to learn. So thank you. Oh, great. Um, well, we do have uh, concerns of what's going on in the area. And maybe we could get your position of uh, how you feel about those concerns, if that's okay. Uh, sure. Yes. If I have answers, I'm happy to provide them. Well, it's more of maybe along the lines of your policies that uh, the board members and the property owners are going to want to know about. Um, so, Diana, you, you do have a list. Um, maybe you want to uh, ask uh, the council uh, member and see what she thinks about some of the issues that are affecting our district. Sure. So, um what are your what are your immediate actions or if I may I'll rephrase that what are your thoughts on um, how to on ways to alleviate our homeless situation I know this is a loaded question but yeah <sighs> well no it's not a loaded question I think it's just a big question and I think one so I can tell you about what we've been doing since I've come into office um, and ways in which I think we can improve some of the some of the challenges that, that we're facing in Los Angeles. Um, so one of the things that I realized when I came in, I, I've been trying to learn more about outreach in the district and how outreach teams have been going out, where they're going out, um, and what kind of challenges outreach teams are facing as they're engaging with people experiencing homelessness and, and trying to get them access to services and housing. One of the challenges I've faced so far is that it has actually been somewhat difficult to understand how outreach has been structured, what kinds of services are being provided, how consistently those services are being provided and, and where, um, and um, what are the outcomes of, of that work. And so what I've really been doing over the past few weeks is to try and break down some of the barriers that our council offices how our council office has faced so far in learning more about that and um, to seeing how we can work much more closely in partnership, including sharing um, information that will help us coordinate better um, with LASA and with the other service providers in our area uh, to make sure that we're actually being able to work together effectively on the issue of homelessness and with, with some real, I think, visibility, transparency, and accountability on this, which we just haven't seen. You know, I think um, I just had a very good meeting with Lhasa today, um, and we should be having two more teams that, or I, I, at least one more team that's going to be coming online that's going to be working directly in partnership with the district. So that is related to this, uh, the, the Judge Carter case. Um, so each of those council districts is going to have an outreach team that's dedicated to them and will be able to work with LASA to set priorities on what they're doing, where they're going. There's another team that's been freed up. So hopefully we'll be able to work with two teams and we're talking to service providers to actually be able to supplement that with another team. So we should be from the council office able to have kind of a, a a proactive set of people who we're working with very closely to move us towards our goals and, and should be able to hold ourselves accountable for, for making progress. Um, yeah, so I'm excited about that. The other thing that, ha that is happening as a result of the, the Judge Carter case is that we have um, housing options that are being made available. So one of the biggest challenges when outreach teams are going out is that often they don't have a place for people experiencing homelessness to go immediately. Like they'll work with someone for months and they won't be able to have a place for someone to go. But because of the case, there is actually a need for the city to bring thousands more units online through a variety of means, whether it be through rapid rehousing vouchers, whether it be through project room key rooms, whether it be through um, there are in, in this district, actually, there are some, um, some beds that are being occupied through bridge home facilities. Those are, um, uh, not permanent housing, but, um, temporary interim housing options. So there's going to be a whole range of housing options. So that means that outreach providers in the district over these next few weeks will not just be going out to say, what can I, is there, you know, just to get to know people, they're actually going to be able to say, 
hi, do you need help? And I have a room that's not a non, that's a non congregate room for you right now, which I think will be a real improvement. So I'm, I'm hoping that we'll be able to, um, you know, I think that that's a big barrier that I know outreach workers are facing that this case is forcing the city to overcome, which is good. And as COVID restrictions are lifted, and we have, you know, our how we have our unhoused communities um, attached to properties and, you know, uh, located in front of schools where children will walk on, on the sidewalks, which at this point, they would be forced to walk into the street. Um, is there any solution to that or any thoughts? Um, you know, on how, on how since we're, we don't have, we, we cannot, have the authority to remove them or ask them to move or and not that we want to disrupt anything but um it is disruptive being located in front of a school with with everything that goes along with it you know i think for me i'm really trying to focus on what we can do right now and i'd love to work with you to learn a little bit more about the challenges that this i know that hollywood has some unique challenges and i'd love to learn more about it at this moment, I think what I'm trying to do is to utilize what we have, which is a number of opportunities through Room Key and through this Judge Carter case, where we have more housing available for people than ever before. And I think that's really, really exciting and an opportunity that we must be working to take full advantage of. Um, over the long term, um, yeah, I think we... we I'd like to be able to give that some more thought <laughs> and we can certainly continue. I'm, you know, let's continue talking and let's continue this discussion. And um, from what Tabitha has told me, I know that uh, this is a solutions oriented group that um, is also kind of um, thinking about this issue in a very nuanced way. So I would just like to say, invite you to be a thought partner with us as we work on this um, and, and to say that we're excited to, to be in that position with you. Thank you. And what is your position on the police budget? Are you in favor of increasing the budget or defunding the police? Um, I think we are asking the police to take on a lot of jobs that are not well served by having armed police doing it, including responding to a lot of calls around homelessness um, that are nonviolent calls for service, um, calls related to mental health um, issues that are nonviolent. Uh, and I, I would, what I would really like to see is something that I think the Hollywood community was very invested in, which is actually having many more mental health service providers and many more um, uh, homeless service providers available to, to take on some of that work. And I think that would result in, I think over time, a, a, a smaller police force and a smaller police budget. But you know, I take, I take this issue very seriously. And I think we need to make sure that we are putting into place a system that is able to respond to those issues effectively as well. Excellent. So we, we are in the process of working on re-landscaping our medians or six medians that are in our district that we are re-landscaping with an outside um, landscaper. Are there any council um, dollars available or are we at to the district? Um, so we have uh, two, we have one pot of funds that the council districts have. Um, our council district is unfortunate um, because of the way in which those uh, funds are distributed that CD4 has among the lowest allocations of discretionary funds across the city. Um, and so we're, we're really trying to find what are the best ways of utilizing those funds. What is the budget of your project? 60,000. How much? 60,000. Um, you know, we, we have certainly been willing to support, um, you know, neighborhood level projects and, and provide some support for it. I don't think that is the kind of, that's at a scale where it would be well, probably beyond not. the ability of right, the, of right. the, um, the other thing I did want to say is that, um, in terms of, uh, landscaping and, and, um, uh, you know, maintenance of medians and things like that. One thing that we are doing is investing in the LA Conservation Corps program and, and expanding the number of people who are working in the district. 
So if there are, you know, if there's median maintenance that needs to happen or um, weed trimming or garbage pickup or any of those things, we would be able to actually address those through rather than going through 311 and through the LA sanitation backlog that exists right now, we'd be able to provide support for that through the council office as well. Would that include broken sidewalks? So broken sidewalks, we have to, we're putting in a budget for that. So it will be, um, we'll have a certain number, each broken sidewalk project has to be individually budgeted out, but we will have a budget for, let's say, um, it's, it's going to be a pot of money and depending on how expansive the projects are, we'll be able to put some money towards that as well. How many um, particular sites of broken sidewalks do you have that you're that you're working on? Well, we I have a list, so I could forward that to you. Okay, and is that something that you're already in the process of addressing through kind of the normal city channels? We we are addressing it. We have everything down and are moving forward to hopefully fix our sidewalks. We've had a lot of incidences where pedestrians have been either injured or fallen down in front of restaurants and the potholes and the trees raising up in some areas, especially on Highland are, are not in good condition at this point. So, and have you, where have you inputted those in the city? Is that a list that you've given to the council office in the past or have you actually been working through 311 or what is the method through which you're logging those, um, com logging those issues with the city? We have been putting in requests through 311. However, the fixes are, are more like temporary fixes where the big um, areas, the sidewalks that are lifted, I mean, several feet off the, you know, off the ground will be filled with asphalt, which, which again crumbles and doesn't last and it still causes even more problems. So. Has LACC ever done a sidewalk repair for this area? Not that I'm aware of, outside of the asphalt repairs. Okay. Okay. And we also had a car accident um, last year where someone ran, out, ran into our median and the cement is all cracked. Okay. Oh. I, but I, I can send all those issues to you. Um, Great. And um, I know Tabitha and the other field um, field managers are working on figuring out a way to make a list of priorities that is, you know, that, that takes into account kind of the severity or the, the importance of a particular site to be repaired. And that's something that we're working on. We, we have access to some data from the city on existing issues, but we don't get that updated regularly. So that's also something that we're trying to get systematically given to us. You know, we have our snow, you know, our internal data management system that we have access to, but we don't, we don't um, regularly have access to other um, complaint mechanisms at the city. And hope, we're hoping to make those connections soon and open that up. Would you consider changing the zoning laws to allow high density increased FAR and eliminate the cumbersome entitlement process to a 90 day period if the building is all low income? Yeah, I mean, I think we're looking for um, ways in which to incentivize and support the creation of more affordable housing um, across the district. Uh, and I think looking at the, um, looking at, um, oh, I'm sorry, it's been a long day. Um, <laughs> looking at, reforming the process of affordable housing entitlements uh, and shortening that timeline is a really big part of it. I don't know whether any of you had a chance to look at some of the policy documents that we put out through the campaign, maybe you looked at it before the election, but one of the documents that we put out was about affordable housing construction and we kind of mapped out the whole range of what happens at every stage of the process when you're building affordable housing and we suggested ways in which the city could cut down on those timings um, and make that process significantly shorter, how we could work on reforming some of the zoning issues so that we could make that easier as well. Um, and we're continuing to have those conversations. In fact, um, our planner has just had one this afternoon and texted me excitedly afterwards about um, some potential changes in that process that could help for sure. 
Thank you. Can city owned land be used for development? Yes, absolutely. And we've been working with the CAO to um, identify properties that have been underutilized or that are not being utilized or that are unutilized or being underutilized or are being, um, let's say, where uses could be consolidated in existing properties and, and identifying those opportunities as well. Um, I wonder, too, if I might get a little bit more of a sense of how this group operates and functions and what your priority, I, I uh, tab provided some feedback and, and um, uh, you know, um, some overview points, but would love to hear from you as well on, on kind of your goals for coming together regularly and, and how you've worked effectively with the council office in the past. Excellent. Uh, Jeff? Yeah, well, <clears throat> our main goal is clean and safe. Uh, we pick up approximately eight tons of trash um, from the street and the sidewalk a month. Uh, we have our uh, security teams, which will be on this call, and <clears throat> they provide um, help to our stakeholders and deal with problems that come up and keep the area <clears throat> safe for the people. And uh, we also um, have projects to clean. Um, well, we're going to make the medians uh, beautiful on Highland from Melrose to DeLongpre. And uh, basically, uh, we handle problems that the stakeholders have. They contact us, uh, graffiti removal, trash removal, um, and, and that sort of thing. And uh, we take an empathetic approach to the homeless. Uh, we've given them water in the summer, and uh, we consider them part of our uh, team here. And um, we're not against them, but uh, we like it clean. And uh, David, am I missing anything that you want to add? I don't know if David's <laughs> listening. Uh, did I miss anything, Diana? Uh there, I, I unmuted. No, I think you, you covered uh, things. There's a few other things, uh, council member, that I would like to, to focus on to add to what Jeff said. Um, yes, we, we do, our primary, our primary focus is keeping the district clean. And amazingly, literally, it's tons of trash that we pick up every month. Uh, uh, pretty amazing. Um, and having the i think our security team are more like um, ambassadors they go through they communicate with stakeholders they really find out what's bothering the property owners and business owners and their presence does help keep a very safe community and it is safe uh, the other thing we do and have done throughout the years is to communicate with the council member's office. Is there projects that the council member is interested in or are there if there's things that we're interested in? So we commented upon and uh, with the council member's office on uh, ideas that help improve uh, dramatically this, our little small, small part of the Hollywood community plan. And that was one thing. It had some zoning things, made it better for the businesses and and for the people that live near and use the district. So the initiatives like that, things that affect zoning or land use are things we do like to communicate to the council member's office and work on with the council member. Even something as simple as stop signs for safety um, we've worked on and we would bring to your attention and it saves lives and avoids accidents. Uh, parking meters uh, and parking restrictions um, also come up as well. Um, so that's pretty much what we do. Great. And um, I don't know whether um, you, uh, Tabitha, whether you were able to connect uh, with uh, Meg around the Hollywood community plan issues in this group, but um, it might be a useful conversation to have with our planning team as well. If there's existing recommendations that you've already made, some of those things were not passed on to us from the planning teams. So we would love to be apprised of any recommendations you've made to the office already. Right, we were going to get those to Meg. I think the, the latest things that really are on the uh, our agenda and stakeholders are, are really uh, 
interested in is the uh, the sidewalk repair. And if there is discretionary funds, and maybe we would help out to, because there are some problems on Highland, which has become a pretty uh, trafficked place by foot because of the businesses. Um, and that would be helpful. And also for the medians, it'll be a nice welcoming and uh, beautiful place for the city. It's a well-trafficked place, cars and foot, and it'd be nice to have it uh, looking good and more welcoming. So if we can make that request to you, we'd appreciate it. We'll, we'll send that along. Maybe there's a participation we can share in the cost. Yeah, it would be great to see um, if, if there was a way to identify the priorities, sidewalks that needed to be fixed. Yeah. Um, so we didn't have to go through the 311 program to figure out what was the most pressing. I think that would be really helpful and having neighbors identify those locations is always incredibly helpful for us. Um, we have done that. We, we, have, we have identified them. And I will say the 311 and city fix has actually made it worse. So that's really, why, why, why do you think that is? Uh, because the um, that asphalt does not. Does oh, not, oh, the city does, fix from the. OK, got yeah, it. yeah, the, the, the band aid, as Diana mentioned, it, it uh, it's really a temporary fix. And uh, stakeholders have complained that their customers uh, have found it uh, less easy to navigate those the the street, the sidewalks with that asphalt there than it was with just the, uh, the broken, uh, the broken side. We well, should address that. Yeah. Yeah. So at some, I mean, I only have a couple more minutes uh, with you today and it was a pleasure to meet all of you, but one thing that I would be interested in doing perhaps with Tabitha or, uh, or separately, however, the schedule is aligned would be to come and take a walk of the area and identify those spots. I think that would be great. I know everyone's being careful because of COVID. So I don't want to put, uh, anyone in a position where they're putting themselves at risk, but I would appreciate the chance to come out and see those sites as well. Um, and maybe I can have um, someone from my team set up a time that works for, um, for, for this group, for anyone in this group to be able to identify those locations as well, just so I see what, what we're taking on. Great. Um, it won't take long. I know you're busy and it won't take long. Yeah. And we um, also could get um you know, maybe the LACC folks, I don't know whether, um, what kind of fix they're using. So maybe it would be good to get their supervisor on that walk as well so that they know what is not working and what they, what you would prefer to see there and see if it's possible for them to take that kind of fix on. Thank you. Um, yeah. Just to, just to add, we are doing a lot of um, very exciting um, initiatives in our bid, such as the landscaping and, and the sidewalk repair would really help to enhance once we have that completed, which will probably start in uh, mid-March. The, the median landscaping? Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. And I will send you some plans on it. It's very exciting. We are doing some very exciting things. Well, that's great. Um, and so, yeah, it was a pleasure to, to be here um, and to meet you. And um, I'm glad that you're able to work with Tabitha, who's incredible. And, and we're, we're really here to make sure that we can, you know, support the efforts um, for making the streets more walkable as much as possible. I think that's really, um, I think that's really a great goal. And um, also, I just wanted the other piece I wanted to say is, are you? F you're not fully in the fourth, right? You're also in the thirteenth. Small portion. Oh, it's mostly in the fourth. This one. Yeah, there is a section that's the thirteenth, correct? Okay. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to say Eastern that. We side. Eastern yeah, side. we are regularly in touch with the 13th district teams um, where there's a lot of areas where there's a border with 13 and um, their field staff and our field staff are regularly in touch. And we're also in touch at um, uh, on other projects as well. And so if there's something that requires us to coordinate, it's just always useful if you flag it for us. But yeah. Okay. Outreach teams in our area would really help. Yes. And so, yeah, we'll keep you posted on how that works. I mean, I'm, I'm just so excited. You know, it's, it, I, it feels like uh, there's real potential for um, positive action just because there's housing options available. And I know that's always been a barrier and it just feels like a really positive moment for change. So I'm, I'm pumped um, despite all the hardship um, right now, I know it's not an easy time for anybody, but I, I do think that this is um, 
there's some momentum in the system here and um, that's exciting. Um, so, yeah. Well, thank you so much. Um, it was a pleasure. Thank you, Tabitha, for uh, um, organizing this and and, ha and making sure I could come. And uh, I look forward to um, staying in touch with all of you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for joining us. Bye. I also dropped my email in the chat. So if anyone ever needs to reach out to me, it's there. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. OK. Um, that was great. That was good. Thank you for setting that up, Diana. You're welcome. And now we uh, met our new council member. Um, all right. Well, it's four o'clock and we'll get through our meeting um, and uh, we'll go right to the finance committee. Everyone, can you hear me? Yep, Miguel. Okay. Um, attached to the uh, meeting invitation is a profit and loss uh, statement and our balance sheet. Um, you'll see for the month of January that our uh, expenses were uh, higher than normal. We're typically between seventy and eighty thousand dollars a month. Um, uh, for January, uh, they came in at ninety three thousand four thirty. Um, the reasoning for that is because we had a couple. Uh, security invoices um, from last year, from December, that carried over. So our our expenses for the month were actually uh, normal. Um, this uh, our bylaws uh, in the bid require us to review the twenty twenty or the previous year's annual financial report uh, and uh, approve it in February. Um, we are not able to do that in this meeting. Um, because our CPA was not available uh, to join us this month. He asked to join us next month. So uh, I would like to make a motion uh, to approve uh, postponing review of the 2020 annual financial report until our board meeting uh, in March. I second that motion. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? Uh, in that case, I will uh, call a vote. All in favor? Aye. Uh, say aye. Aye. All opposed, say nay. And any abstentions? Uh, that's it. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Miguel. Excellent report. You answered my question about the extra money. <laughs> I was concerned. All right, we'll go to uh, Diana, the executive director. Okay, so the 2021 assessment um, to date, we have received, which I have invoiced for already, $561,347.11. And we are expecting the majority of those funds to be deposited on March 1st. Um, I have uh, completed assembling the Board of Directors booklets, and once those are assembled uh, and, complete and put into notebooks, I will be sending those out by PDF in email, as well as mailing them out. Diana, your voice is a little faint. You might check with your location of your computer. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, a quick update of uh, the website. Um, the third and fourth quarter, the third quarter newsletter has been up, uploaded to the website in the flipbook format. And starting at the end of the month, the third and fourth quarter newsletter will be sent out now digitally versus solely uploaded as a PDF to the website and mailed to our stakeholders' website. Going forward, I am working on putting together a newsletter that will go out as in an e-blast format that will link all of our articles back to the website so that we can create more traction to our website. And those articles will also uh, coincide with those being posted on social media. And I have also attached Mid-City Neighborhood Greenway Project, 
from the LA Department of Transportation that McGill will, will review. And in the bid consortium meeting, the, the recent meeting last week, we did receive a brochure on the value of all bids in reference to uh, the lobbying law that is being discussed with the ethics committee. So I've attached it because I thought it was a great example of the type of information that will be included in our district brochure that will be distributed once it's completed to all of our stakeholders. Oh, is that the report? All right. Thank you, Diana. Um, the executive committee, um, I'd like to say all you guys are doing fantastic work at the committee level. Uh, the bid is firing on all cylinders. And uh, we do have four new members. And I don't think at the last executive, at the last board meeting, Diana, were they all here? We introduced everybody. I don't I don't know, because we had the vote, right? Oh, they were not, they did not attend the last meeting. All right, so what I'd like to do is, um, the, we have four new members, and um, that's Jackson uh, Brissett, Stephen Burns, Chris Kapov, and Temple Williams. And um, maybe uh, we can go, I'll call your name and just introduce yourself to all the board members, and eventually we'll be off the Zoom and be able to meet, but... Jackson, uh, why don't you introduce yourself to everybody and just tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, hey everyone, nice to meet you. Um, I'm Jackson Brissett. I am the Senior Director of Investments. So I run acquisitions for Bardis Investment Group. We're a, um, a small boutique developer uh, located in West Hollywood, but um, we have a lot of projects in Hollywood. Um, we currently have $800 million of total development in our pipeline of which 200 million is either already owned or under contract on in this bids district alone. One of which um, is the Melrose and Seward project that you might've seen in the news. Um, we build and rehab um, creative office complexes catering towards media and entertainment companies. Um, our founder, David Simon, has a lot of experience with uh, media tenants. He did Columbia Square and Academy on Vine uh, over in the Sunset and Vine corridor. So um, that, that's us. Thank you. Uh, welcome aboard. Glad to have you. Um, Stephen Burns. Hello, everyone. I'm Stephen. I'm representing the Los Angeles LGBT Center. Uh, it's one of the bigger nonprofits in the Media Bid District. We're just about to open up, I hope, uh, two affordable, affordable housing developments, one for previously homeless youth and one primarily for previously homeless seniors. It was interesting hearing the council members speak to some of that issue because we had a lot of support from the bid and from local businesses and the local community, but it's taken a decade to get this project finished. And one of the main reasons is because of the hurdles and obstacles that we face from the city itself more than anything else. It's just been an absolute nightmare dealing with some of those folks, but uh, obviously that's not an issue for you guys. We appreciate the support the bid has given the center. Uh, personally, I have a, a commercial background, although I work for a nonprofit. Um, I used to be the CEO of a big subsidiary for a company uh, that started off as a dot-com in the year 2000 and has become the biggest online betting business in the world right now. Um, we've acquired a lot of US businesses FanDuel is an example of them, which we now own. The company is now floated. It's called Flutter.com, and it's got thousands of employees and is now worth uh, billions of dollars, which is great. But um, I'm no longer associated with that directly, but I do work at the center every day of the week on all sorts of projects, and I'm trying to um, help align them really to think more entrepreneurial in a sense as an organization so we become less dependent on donations um, and, and city dollars and we think a little bit about running social enterprises and having businesses that help fund the work that we do as well. One example of that is we've opened a coffee shop on Santa Monica Boulevard called Liberation House Coffee Shop. All the people that work there were formerly sent to clients except for one. Um, obviously, we've been impacted right from the start by COVID. We opened in July last year, but it's holding its own. And we're looking forward to welcoming the community there if and when we can. But I'm happy to be here. And we've, um, I'm replacing someone called Simon Costello who represented the center on the bid previously. Thank you so much, Stephen. Uh, Chris. 
Hi, everyone. My name is Chris Kapov, and I'm the uh, West Coast director of a New York-based furniture and art gallery called Ralph Pucci. And uh, we're on McCadden. Uh, I have Ron on one side and Timothy on the other. So McCadden Place is represented very well on the on the bid. So uh, we uh, represent uh, probably 25, 30 furniture designers that uh, are exclusively sold through Ralph Pucci. And then we have uh, some business, that, uh, art business, that uh, sort of augments as well. We deal uh, primarily just with the interior design trade. We don't sell too much to the general public. We occasionally will, but anybody is welcome to come through. Um, we have a great space on McCadden. Um, we have three showrooms: one on um, one in here, one in New York, and one in Miami. And uh, I'm really happy to be a part of the bid. I'm going to be on the arts committee and the marketing committee, and I've already talked to people on those committees. So I'm really looking forward to uh, doing some good. So nice to meet you all. Thank you so much, Chris. We're very glad to have you. I am Temple Williams. Hi, everybody. I'm Temple Williams. Uh, I am a, a serial C-suite executive in the television business, uh, currently COO of 51 Minds, though we are not within the district. Uh, we do a good bit of business here in Hollywood, and um, I actually live within the district and run a couple of small businesses out of my, uh, my law firm in Hollywood. Um, I'm pleased to be here. I'm excited about this organization just because it is literally close to home for me. And, and, you know, it feels like the impact that the work that the bid does is directly affects both my personal life and my business life. So I'm excited to be here with you guys and sharing the work. Thank you. No, we're, we're excited to have you. Thank you, Temple. All right. Um, does anyone have any questions of the new members or any comments before we move on? Hearing none, we'll go to Martha, the Arts Committee. Was excited to meet with the Arts Committee this month for the first time in some time. We spent a moment reviewing the status of the stakeholders. You know, most of the theaters, all of the theaters are still shut down, but the galleries are generally open by appointment. We reviewed some of our, um, you know, projects that we had been working on prior to the pandemic. But I think what we're all most excited about right now is exploring the possibility of um, a piece of public art in the medians that would go along with the new um, median project. So we're researching with Clean and Green what it will take to put a foundation in. And we're also reaching out to the Department of Cultural Affairs that manages you know, the 1% the for the arts dollars. My understanding is that a developer can um, earmark their ADF funds, their 1% to local art projects, public art projects. So I want to try to find whether or not one of the developments in our bid might not allocate some or all of those dollars for um, a, a, an artwork created for our bid for one of those medians. So we're all excited about this. We have a number of other projects under discussion, and we're really interested in working with the council members' offices on the most critical sidewalk repairs. Thank you, Martha. I think your committee is going to do great this year. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right. Any any questions for Martha about the projects? No. All right. Miguel, the Plum Committee. Hi, everyone. Um, uh, this is probably not a surprise, but the 7-Eleven nuisance abatement uh, hearing has not been scheduled. Um, <laughs> Uh, apparently, the public records request um, from the owner of the company to the LAPD uh, has uh, it's still open, uh, so they're not going to schedule that hearing uh, uh, until that is complete. Um, the Hollywood Community Plan Update Two: um, the there was a CPC hearing this past uh, uh, February uh, 18th. Um, I attended. Uh, and spoke on behalf of uh, Plum and the bid um, in support of the update, um, basically summarizing the uh, previous comment letters uh, that we all worked on together uh, as a board and submitted uh, to the planning department. Um, the commissioners ultimately voted to uh, continue the meeting to March 18th. So we can provide uh, information if you're interested in attending uh, the virtual uh, meeting um, to continue hearing uh, about the community plan update. 
um, most of the comments um, from the first portion of the uh, of the hearing um, centered around uh, affordable housing um, FAR in the regional center, uh, not not our portion of the bid, but in re really in the regional center, uh, the CPIO um, and uh, conditional use permits for uh, hotels. Um, uh, the third item, uh, this next Plum Committee meeting, uh, we're going to be uh, visited by the LADOT, who's going to present a, a plan for a greenway project that is going to connect um, uh, the neighborhoods of uh, Beverly Grove uh, area with the uh, Hollywood area. And this greenway, uh, which will include uh, bicycle lane improvements, uh, traffic circles, um, improvements to intersections to create um, bicycle queuing areas um, uh, is going to pass uh, straight through our district. Um, it's going to come down uh, Willoughby and then north uh, or, uh, along Orange Drive and ultimately uh, connect to the Metro Line Station at Hollywood and Highland. Um, so it's bound to be a very uh, interesting presentation. So uh, I encourage you to join us if, if you're interested. Um, and then uh, is it okay if I give a couple uh, development project updates that we had yes. talked about? It's not on yes. the agenda, but um, we were also visited by the post group uh, in our Plum Committee meeting this past uh, month um, who presented their 10 story office uh, project. Uh, media production office rather at uh, 1000 Seward Street, which you may know is the current site of the Rayo's uh, restaurant um, and a uh, large parking lot. Um, it's a very interesting project. They're currently uh, working on entitlements. Um, it's uh, uh, going to have grand, ground floor retail in addition to the media office space and a rooftop restaurant. Um, they did not ask us for our approval yet. They're still uh, uh, working on the design of the project. Um, this was really more of an introduction and they will return to uh, the Plum Committee to ask for uh, the, board, uh, uh, the board support of the project. Um, in this, uh, our upcoming uh, Plum Committee meeting, uh, BARDAS, um, uh, which you'll recall Jackson Prezet uh, works for, um, is going to be presenting their uh, media production complex at Melrose and Seward. Um, and uh, one other update, uh, I spoke with uh, a representative from the ONI group um, this past month, and they gave me a quick update on construction of their 231-unit uh, uh, apartment building on Santa Monica Boulevard and Orange Drive. Um, which you'll recall uh, we uh, supported um, a couple years ago when they came to us uh, during their entitlement process. Um, the quick update is that they were stalled last year due to COVID and a shortage of labor, um, but they are currently moving. Uh, they're bringing their columns up to grade, and we should see the building going vertical uh, within three months. Uh, delivery is uh, the fourth quarter of 2022. Um, and there's no change to the program that they presented to the board. Miguel, great. That is all. It's good to hear um, projects are starting in our district again. So yes, you're it is. doing great. All right. Any questions for Miguel on any of the projects or anything? Hearing none. Uh, Thor. Oh, Stephen. Looks like Stephen has a question. All right. Thank you. It, it's not a question, really. It's just a, an acknowledgement and a thanks to Miguel. Um, that CPC meeting was hell. <laughs> you may attend them all the time. I certainly don't. But it was six and a half hours, and you were very patiently waiting for your turn to represent us, and you did a great job doing it. So thank you very much for being a lot more patient than I would have been. Thank you, Stephen. All right. Thank you. Uh, Thor, clean yeah. and green. Thank you. Uh, real quick, I'd like to echo Stevens. I was uh, listening to that for almost all of it. And uh, Miguel did a great job representing our bid. Thanks for that. Um, Clean Street Report, uh, let me just rattle off um, the, their report for January. Amount of pedestrian trash, 
was approximately six and a half tons. Uh, that's, I believe, coming from directly from our trash cans that they empty out on, uh, uh, on their daily routine. Sidewalk and street sweeping collection was estimated at just over nine tons. So there's a lot of uh, tonnage out there that uh, we take in and, and, and move to its appropriate spot. Graffiti abatement, this uh, January was very slow. We had one uh, request for graffiti abatement, uh, which is nice to, to hear that there wasn't more than that. Um, dumped bulky items pickups. Uh, they had 32 incidents, uh, and I just gotta remind everybody, they just get out there very quickly. So when uh, us as stakeholders uh, call, um, they're very responsive. Um, so 32 times they remove bulky items uh, and along with that 21 used needles as part of that. Um, they spent 16 hours maintaining the medians. Power washing, 27 hours, which includes bus stops. And a lot of that is cleaning up after encampments, around encampments when we've had a uh, clean street pick up the bulky items or do a, a, a trash pickup in those areas, they immediately spray wash, um, which I think is amazing. We can never get that done. Um, trash cans, we have been talking to clean street about trash cans, which ones are used more, more or less. Um, and so we're getting feedback from them and no surprise, uh, the trash can around our 7-Eleven is constantly full. So we'll be looking at um, some solutions um, and we'll talk to Joaquin to find out if they're full and that's great, we pick it up or if it's overflowing and we need to uh, uh, maybe put another trash can there, consider maybe a larger one in that vicinity because that one is, is just constantly either full or, you know, past capacity. Um, and then they, they continue to give us the area of critical needs. And uh, it's a critically long, long list of properties that they've gone out to, uh, to clean on top of, you know, their normal day-to-day -day business operations. So we're just thrilled with Clean Street. They've done a wonderful job and continuing to do so. Um, are there any questions regarding Clean Street in our in our district? Um, Thor, I just wanted to say that um, around our area is looking great. Clean Street's doing an amazing job, and to be honest, I haven't seen that encampment like that clean for that long in a really long time. So, whether the people who are living there are getting used to you know cleaning up a little bit more after themselves, but it's looking much better overall for a while now. So. Just want to bring that to your attention. Well, we really appreciate that. And I think, um, you know, Clean Street certainly does what they do and they do it fantastically. But also in, in, in those cases, I think we, we should also acknowledge our captains, Bill and Ayana, for engaging uh, Timothy early on, engaging with the, the, that specific community. And, and, and from what I understand, they've just really got a good rapport with them and they understand that we're there. To, to provide assistance and to keep it clean. And so thank you captains for your part in that. It's, it's definitely a team, a team project. So appreciate it all. Um, so going on to uh, our medians, um, you know, we're really there. We all know that we have the garden of Eva and they have proposed for us to do all six medians at a price tag of $59,280. Um, so it's roughly $10,000 a median. They have mentioned that it would take roughly 10 days from start to finish to complete all six medians. And as Diana mentioned earlier, we're hoping that we can get them on board and going sometime middle of next month. And by the time April rolls around, we should have brand new medians um, that we all have, have that have weighed in. Just think that it's a it's a very good concept with really smart uh, plants that they tend to plant. And along with that, there's a, a three month um, 
period of time where they will maintain the median as, as part of our initial, you know, uh, uh, agreement to do the medians. So, you know, we're, we're really looking forward to pulling the trigger on that. And at our last board meeting, I'm sorry, our last clean and green meeting, there was a motion. We asked Ava to give us a quote on maintaining the medians past that three month window that we have already in place. And she came back with us, which, you know, many of us were a bit surprised that it was so, um, I think cost effective, basically to maintain the medians ongoing, which I think is a great scenario because they've actually planted the medians and they're going to have a lot of, uh, you know, time and sweat and they're going to very much keep them up as, as best anybody could was $720 a month. Um, and that would be two laborers, two hours per week. Um, she thought that that was the right amount of uh, attention that these medians would need to, to stay healthy and to, to uh, not degradate as they have in the past. And so our committee made a motion to contract with Garden of Eva to maintain the median landscaping for a period of one year for the cost of $720 a month for 12 months. Um, and I would like if somebody could second that motion and then we can discuss. I'll second that. Thank you, Temple. Um, so the the bottom line is we feel that that's a very good price. If we're gonna spend $60,000 on medians and until the plants at least get more mature where we could feel comfortable that maybe Clean Street can go back in, we feel that a 12 month contract um, would be, and it's actually 15 months of maintenance um, would be beneficial and uh, cost effective to maintain the medians. So if there's any questions, Martha, you have your hand up. Would there be any offset with a slight reduction from Green Street since they would not then be responsible for the medians? Um, as far as their, their monthly payment, no, I think we would just have them, you know, focus more on, on other issues that they do in, in the, in the district, you know, they're, that we pay them roughly five thousand dollars less than our last contractor, so we we feel that they are they're earning every penny. And, and even if we take a couple hours a week off of their schedule, they they will definitely apply it to other parts of the district. Hey Thor, I got a question. Yes, you, Ron. Yeah, uh, you know this sounds great as we talked about in the uh, in the clean meeting. Uh, my only question, I think, it, it, it is it might just be a good starting point. I think maybe Ava is thinking, well, okay, so you mentioned two laborers, uh, two hours a week. That's four hours a week we're getting out of uh, cleanup. And under normal circumstances, I think that would probably be fine uh, and more than adequate. But I'm just uh, envisioning... I guess a worst case scenario, you know, which does happen from time to time, somebody comes in there and tears the whole thing up, car drives over or something. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised in the future if, if you had to come to us because Ava said, look, there's a big mess and we need a couple more hours a week or at least an emergency cleanup or maybe even a replanting if something goes wrong. But at this rate that she's given us, I think it's more than reasonable and, and the board would agree to that. Well, thanks, Ron. And it, it also stipulates in this contract that if we wanted mm -hmm. to add additional hours, uh, I believe it would be forty dollars per hour. So, if if right. that if that Thor, does come in, we could certainly do that. Yes. Thor, is that two men two hours a week per median? Uh, no, for, it would have to be, would it not? For all six medians. I mean, you know, they, 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 that would be for all six medians to maintain them. So two hours times two per week. Yeah. For, for I think it isn't. Uh, and maybe we should check on whether that's uh, the right rate. 
Yeah, uh, because it's not enough time. I, we just asked two, for her. two hours, two hours a week for six medians. Uh, well, doesn't well, sound like two guys, two guys, four, guys. Hours, four hours per week. Well, four I don't hours. know. And if, and it's forty dollars an hour might be on the high end. I want to look to see if that actually is the right number or the right, sir. I would look a little deeper into that. Okay. Well, I, I'll tell you this. Brian, we, we did ask for her to, to give us Diana, correct. Uh, what would you think it would take to maintain the medians in, you know, first of class order. And this is what she recommended that she could do. Is that correct, Diana? Yes. Yes. That's so, you know, we're just going with the expert who's planning them. You might be right, David and Ron, that uh, and and Brian. It it might take a little bit more, but she believes that that's what it would take. No, uh, Thor. I think it, two guys. It works out to thirty minutes for two guys per median. Forty-five. If right? if my math is correct, and that and if for, if we're just pulling some weeds and and so forth, that should be adequate. But any extraordinary circumstances, which there may be, that would be different. Uh, Martha? I think, I think it's 45 minutes per median then, it, you know, per guy. So, I mean, if they're, you know, if they are skilled gardeners and, you know, understand this work, I would, I think I would trust her ability to assess that. I guess my question is, they're going to, I assume they're going to come and complete the job. So if one time it takes them a little less time and one time it takes a little more, does this revert to something hourly or is it 720 a month for just the maintenance and it's based on this? That, that's correct, your, your latter statements. It's so, I mean, in some months there's gonna be five weeks or closer to, or you know, five days, so I, I you know. Yeah, I, I, I don't expect that, you know, to, to kind of have them on the clock I expect them to do the job because she said they could do that and maintain the medium and high quality pads. Hey, Thor? Uh, I, will say it, I will say that I think it, it, it does make sense to have the same group that's planting it be the group that maintains it for a year. It, 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 even ultimately, it takes out the, the finger pointing risk of one group saying, oh, well, the plants aren't doing well because you, they were specified wrong or they were planted wrong or the group that specified and designed it saying, oh, well, it's the guy who's maintaining them. So I, I support the idea of using the same group as using the Garden of Viva to do the maintenance as long as uh, we think that they're competitive, uh, competitively priced with the other groups. Uh, thank you, Miguel. I, I agree. And that was the conclusion I came to with, you know, that with our, our last go around on the medians. Hey, Thor, I just had a question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there somewhere a map that shows where the six medians are? Is it on the website? Uh, yeah, we should. They're, they're, uh, um, I would imagine they're on our website somewhere. Yeah. Um, but they are, Chris, they're all on Highland Avenue between Melrose going north um, to Lexington. So, so they're all on Highland. They're all, all, all six of our medians are on Highland. Yes. Got it. But I know where they are then. Thanks. And, and, and right. if you haven't seen the plan yet, it, it's beautiful what they're, what they're planning the landscape there. I'll go ahead and send that out again, for, especially for our new members. Uh, thank you, Diana. Thanks, Diana. Thor, uh, Thor do you want to, um, we've had a discussion without a motion. Do you want to um, call for a motion and nope. any Ooh, further please. discussion? No, I, 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 I brought the question and we were seconded by... Uh, oh, we did? Yes. Okay. So we're oh, right. discussing it. So if there are any other questions, I call the vote all in, in favor of having Garden of Ava uh, maintain the, lands, the, the, the medians. Please raise your hands. Anybody says no? Any abstentions? I think it's the right move. Appreciate it, everybody. Um, that's my report. Thank you, Thor. Excellent. And we're very excited uh, for what's coming. Um, Ashley, Marketing Committee. Okay. Hi, everyone. And I uh, want to welcome again the new board members. Very exciting to have you all. And um, if there's anything that's happening around you or if you've noticed any 
you know, new businesses coming around you, please let us know. We'd love to give them a shout out. So anything um, that we can put, you know, on our social media, which we're, we're mostly active on Instagram as well as Facebook, um, you know, please let us know. We'd love to, to give them a shout out if that's something that is that they would like to happen and, uh, you know, show them some support. So um, I'll start with the newsletter, the first quarter newsletter. Diana went briefly over the, uh, the end of the year newsletter. So a couple of the ideas that we have for the first quarter newsletter is um, schools are reopening. So we'll be doing a, um, you know, we'll be talking to Tina Harris, who's with the Hollywood Schoolhouse. The uh, couple new businesses also have come in, you know, coming into, into the district um, this quarter. So there's a company named Story File. Uh, the Mediterranean restaurant, there's the 1000 Seward project. And also, um, you know, we'd love to talk to our new board members as well and um, take pictures of you and, um, you know, introduce you as well to uh, the team to, uh, to the district. So those are a couple of the ideas for the first quarter newsletter. Of course, we're, we're always, you know, open to feedback as you see the newsletters come through, or if you have ideas that you that you'd like for us to, uh, to talk about, you know, let us let us know. Um, the website is uh, coming along. Um, we, you know, plan on trying to keep that updated, so we keep people kind of coming through and taking a look at the website and um, keeping posts. You know, our plan is every couple of weeks or once a month to make sure that we've got new content and stories and posts about what's happening in the district. Um, and for social media, um, with the report with social media, one of the top uh, engaged posts, you know, we're really working on trying to get engagement. So really taking a look at who following us on Instagram, um, you know, and trying to get the engagement happen, happen. So it's just uh, overall more effective page. So we did a, a contest, you know, a Valentine's Day giveaway um, that we gave away a picnic um a little picnic basket from every table, which is also a new business into the district. And uh, kind of interestingly enough, like 25% of the people who had clicked and viewed it were people who were not um, already following the Hollywood Media District. So that was kind of cool to see new people coming through our page. So we plan to do more of those types of things and promoting our businesses within the district and doing giveaways and doing things that just kind of encourage community uh, support. Um, so let's see here. Otherwise, the database and the brochure, um, Diana has found someone who's going to be helping us flush out the design and the content of the brochure. So we will hopefully be meeting soon. And, um, you know, we've got some ideas. We just need someone to put it through, design it. And our plan is to have something ready to view by our next marketing meeting next month. So uh, that's it. That's the end of the report. And any questions, please let me know. Hearing no questions. Ashley, thank you. You're doing great work. We look forward to it. Um, the nominating board committee is not active at the moment. We did our nominations and introduced the people. So we will uh, go to David as the committee chair of SAFE. Hi. Um, okay, just a few things. Uh, first of all, there's been, um, we've received a lot of complaints by the two schools in our district, the Schoolhouse and Bancroft Middle School, because there, there have been some uh, in large encampments that are blocking pathways for students to go to different activities. And uh, we have helped them out and our team will be available to assist if some of their students need some assistance to walk around the encampment so they remain safe. We have, uh, as I've talked about before, we started a process last year of having two excellent new captains, Ayana and Bill, who are on, so they're able to get more onto the street to see what's uh, going on, to communicate with the stakeholders and businesses. We're of course waiting for Ashley and Diana to finish that brochure. And when they do, they'll have that as well. So that stakeholders and businesses are aware of all of the activities and can voice their concerns and needs for the, for the community as, as they see it. Um, and we will, we will aggregate those and respond to them. 
Usually it's some calls for some assistance or the cleanup, which has been working, but at least we'll be out there. So that's part of their job. In addition, and I ask all of you to think about this, talk to your uh, people in, in the district that you know, is we're trying to redefine where they're going and where they're spending their time and evaluating what areas need their bike, bike patrol and presence. I've had several um, uh, property owners, uh, some on Seward near, near uh, Jackson's project, saying that the fact that they drive up, stop at a checkpoint, has actually helped and made the place more secure. And so if you know of places that require a checkpoint where they go and they stop and spend some time, you should send, email that to me and we'll incorporate it in, into a new map where they patrol and go and spend time. We're gonna re reimagine it a little bit so that they spend more time at areas that tend to need the presence of more security. Uh, so if you have ideas where those, where, if you know of any places that require more attention by security, let me know so we can incorporate it into their path and their security plan for uh, our next meeting. So if you get that to me in a week or so, and then on, on an ongoing basis. Other uh, than that, um, uh, and to keep it reasonably short, Ayana and Bill, can you add some of your uh, experiences that you've had over the last month? But you're going to have to unmute, not unmask or unmask. You're on mute, guys. Uh, okay, I, we were discussing. I thought who was going to go first, but I guess I'll go first. Uh, this past month, uh, you know, we've had some weather issues, and that has affected uh, the number of our unsheltered uh, residents in the area. Uh, as far as being out and about, uh, we do continue to engage them all, uh, on a daily basis, uh, try to offer assistance. Uh, we, over the past uh, six months, have been uh, making a uh, concerted effort to uh, in, uh, increase our relationship with them, uh, let them know that we're on, on their side, uh, to try and help them as much as possible while still striking a balance to... Um, uh, get their cooperation, and, and that has really helped a lot. Uh, we're going to go into some of the uh, warmer months, and I suspect that that's going to uh, continue as they start getting more out. Uh, as David alluded to, we, our biggest uh, complaint that we've had this past month is the schools reopening. Uh, we do have uh, encampments that are attached to the sides of uh, Bancroft Middle School, uh, we do, and, and with Hollywood Schoolhouse, we also have um, Vine Street Early, uh, Early Education Center that's on Vine that also has a tent encampment uh, attached to the side of that. And uh, going forward, the, the problems that we are, the concerns that we've been receiving from uh, parents as well as stakeholders uh, is not letting their children to have to cross into the street. So we are trying to work uh, with everybody to come up with a, a solution that keeps the children safe. Uh, and that's going to be our focus going forward as we know the schools are going to be reopening very soon. Ayana, you know. Ayana? Yes. And the additional thing that we're going to add on to a security report is our unhoused community. Uh, we have an unhoused map that we created. We currently have approximately 53, this is an estimate, 53 unhoused uh, members in our community located throughout the district. Most of them are congregated around the same areas of Sycamore, Mansfield, uh, McCadden and Las Palmas, as well as Lillian Avenue. So those are the areas of high concentration. Along with that, uh, those high areas of concentration that we have, we specifically target them on Fridays to do our Clean Street collaboration with Clean Street. And those have been really effective. We're actually gonna get ready to do one for tomorrow, uh, where we're gonna start aiming at uh, Sycamore and work our way from the west side of the district all the way to the east side of the district. Uh, actually, hopefully tomorrow, if there's anything in your area, we'll tackle that as well. And anything that is high critical needs, we uh, tackle them along the way and 
continue to do that. The Clean Street Collaboration has been really successful. Uh, when we go out there and do one with our unhoused community, we provide them with trash cans, I'm sorry, trash bags, so that they can throw their trash in. And it's actually really been effective. Uh, every time we go out there now, they're pretty much uh, ready to go with their trash bags. Uh, located right on the corner so that it makes the collaboration a lot smoother and easier, streamline it, and we're all working together with the community. How many times a week do you give trash bags to people, to homeless people who need them? We give them out at least once a week on Fridays, and we give them out any time that our bike officers are riding around and they ask for it, they are able to provide that to them. It's effective. Yes, sir. It is. Okay. Anything else to add, Ayanna? No, and nothing else to add on Excellent. our report. Sounds great. Yes, Thank you. And Jeff, that concludes it. Well, I have a All question. right, David. Uh, oh, but, but no. go ahead, Diane. Okay. I attached some pictures, and I thought it was important to for everyone to notice that there are new types of um, shelters being built on the streets by our unhoused community. And I just wanted Ayana and Bill or one of you to briefly talk about the different types of structures that are being built, in case you see them. Yes, yeah, so uh, looking at the first image here, uh, the first image on Mansfield, uh, this is actually a new uh, dwelling structure that just recently came up over the last couple of days. Uh, this is just being uh, held up together by different pieces of uh, wood and some tarp. This is a new kind of a uh, dwelling that is actually popping up in our district. Over by the Hollywood Schoolhouse, it's an unhoused area. Uh, we have uh, homeless people just literally sleeping on the sidewalk. They do not have a formal dwelling. These are part of our unsheltered uh, community. In addition to that, on the second unhoused community PDF, we have uh, tents. We have our traditional tents. We have uh, unhoused members still living in campers and RVs. That is still a big uh, thing in our district. And we actually do have 13 RVs in our district. Uh, so these are the different types of dwellings that we actually have, uh, specifically the one on Mansfield. This is the newest uh, type of unhoused uh, dwelling that our homeless community is, is putting up so together. Those semi-temporary buildings are called favelas. I highly recommend everyone look up the Brazilian favelas and how they came to be and what kind of policies created them because it's happening now and these are just the baby burdens. So just that's my point of view. You can research it and find a lot of information. What is it called again, Tim? Favelas. F-A-V-E-L-A-S. I mean, it's a very common disruption of cities and it happened in Brazil really hardcore. So there's all sorts of case studies on it. Thank you. There are more permanent structures. Is that right, Ayana? Yes, sir. These are a lot more permanent. These actually are not going to, these are not something that easily can be taken down. These, these are actually structures that we would actually really have to dismantle. It's not it's something as simple, simple and easy as a tent or uh, just some tarps, you know, put up together an easy pop up tent. This is actually, they took some time and planning to actually build this dwelling. So they can so they first they, they then permanently block the pathway. Yes, sir. This particular area uh, is is actually blocked on the sidewalk. There's no way the uh, ADA is accessible on the other side of the, of the dwelling, and it's literally uh, up against the actual sidewalk as well. Yeah, I drove by it today, and it was uh, it was a little alarming. Yes, sir. It's what Highland looked like a year ago, just now with wood. And it's, again, created by bad policy. Like, that's something we all have to reiterate. And the police aren't going to enforce ADA laws anymore. That's just, they don't have that bandwidth. Right. The, the, the laws are on the books to prevent it, but the city refuses to enforce those laws. Absolutely. And there's, uh, unfortunately, there's 
nothing that we can actually do at the moment, even though there is, as you guys just mentioned, there's laws it. on the books, right. right. Absolutely. The best thing that we as security can do is just continue to monitor these locations and, and provide as much uniform presence via bike patrols as much as we can just to deter any kind of criminal activity. That's, uh, that's our target at the moment. It looked to me like it was fastened or secured to one of our stakeholders building is I was, I just drove by and saw that. Is there anything an individual stakeholder can, can do that we might not really be able to do? Uh, the individual stakeholder can remove a uh, property that is on their private property. That is something that an individual stakeholder can do. Uh, however, for this particular situation on, on Mansfield, it's not actually attached to the building, the brick building behind it. It's literally enclosed around the light pole. It's surrounding the light pole, and there's a little bit of wiggle room behind it, but not enough for anybody to be able to walk freely. If it's attached to a property, the property owner can remove it. Yes, they can remove it. They can request our assistance. Uh, we as a public safety bid, we can actually be there to ensure that everybody's being peaceful. We can go with Clean Street to actually remove uh, the property. Once it is actually on the street, we can do that, but we cannot actually remove a tent off of private property without uh, the help of the business owner. Pretty dismal. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm familiar with the favelas. Uh, it's if you look it up, it, it, I hope that doesn't pop up in our district uh, more than this one. Uh, David, thank you for the report. Excellent. Um, moving on, is there any old business? Any new business? Okay, it is. Sorry for the length today. Uh, everybody. It's 452. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you for everybody, all your work. Thank you. See you next time.